Hello friends, welcome to my latest blog series on Gen AI rag based apps like building chatbot and knowledge assistant applications. These applications will build run 100% locally on your laptop using open source technologies like Llama 3.2, Chroma, Postgres and some other applications. This blog series is for beginners and young entrepreneurs who want to build Gen AI rag driven applications. We are going to use some latest open source models like Llama 3.2 which is released just today. These are some of the topics we are going to cover in this video today and in rest of the follow-up series. So for example, in this today's session, we are going to learn how to set up and use LLM and follow-up session, we are going to work through data loader, tokenizer, tool function callings. And when the time permits, we are going to build some very professional application in later series. As I stated, this blog series is for beginners and young entrepreneurs. Before we move any further, I want to show you a picture of what we are going to build. So as you can see, this application is built entirely in Flutter. So you will be able to use all these LLM models inside those Flutter app. And as you can see, this is an open web UI based application. So at the end of the day, you will be able to build some cool application looking list like this. So for instance, this is a TypeI application. So you will be able to use Flutter or TypeI or you will be able to use open web UI uh, as a UI interface. Now let's take a minute to understand the design we are going to build. So this is a very high level architecture process flow diagram you're looking at the screen. As you can see, there is a data section, there's an AI engine inference section, and the, finally, the application sections we are going to build upon these technologies. So for example, our ultimate goal is to build applications like you know, a, an online manual, or knowledge store, or chatbot, or it could be a very simple, very cool, like you know, manually file. Suppose you are creating a smart AI for answering questions. You are creating a small chain assistant. So let's just you know think about the applications you are going to build. So it could be very domain specific, like you know, time and expense travel, law expense, auto grader, things like that. Or it could be very generic application. So it depends on your requirements. Again, first you have to decide what kind of application you are going to build. Most of the technologies we are going to use, the application is go, the architecture is going to be almost the same. For an instance, let's take a look at this application. So as you can see, this application is entirely built in TyPy. That's a Python based framework here. So this is the home page, and when you browse to the next tab, it's a separate page called chatbot. So here you can ask domain specific question. So as you can see, this is the chat uh, chatbot interface. What it does, you can simply, it allows you to type your question and it goes to the LLM and it goes to your RAG database, answer is based on your question. You can also store the user chat history. So this is a very simple looking chatbot application you can build. Other than building simple chatbot, we are also going to cover concept of AI agents and tool of functional calling. So here, as you can see, we have built a couple of AI agents. People also call it AI assistant, and these are actually different tools and functional calling agents. Using these agents, what you can do, you can also build your machine learning algorithm for forecasting, and you can write SQLs, which goes to the database and fetches the data. Think about each agent as a separate algorithm which has some decision making power or simply it queries your RAG database here. So we are going to build tons of different agents in this application and there will be so many things you will be doing uh, You'll be doing when working with tools and functional callings. Now before we jump onto the actual writing code, let's review some more use cases. So for example, in case you are going to build an help desk, an autoresponder application, or simply an online manual. So if you browse to my GitHub repository, the point is what I want to show you, that each of these applications are their own notebooks. So if you are browsing through my directory, I'm going to, as we progress and as we are going to build different application, you'll find the entire source code into that appropriate directory. So as you can see, when, when you're working, when you're creating an online manual, you'll find all the related code inside that manualified directory. All right, so let's start building our application. So in the very beginning, first you have to think about an AI engine followed by the data. So first make sure that you have AI application simple running on your, on your laptop. Second, we are going to work through the data followed by RAG and tokenizer. Then we are going to implement models, prompt templates, etc. And finally, we are going to deliver applications like Manulify or Knowledge Store, all of those things here. So all of these things will come in the sequence. In lesson number one, we are just going to focus on AI engine followed by data, followed by RAG. So these are the steps. Again, you will find the, all of this application, all of this, you know, whatever we are going to discuss, everything is included in the GitHub repository. So we'll start with the setting up our LLM, okay? And in this lesson today, we are just going to simply focus on building and running an AI engine, a locally hosted AI application on your, uh, uh, on your local machine. 
So enough with the theory and use cases and slides. Let's go jump into the code. Before we jump into the code, one more thing I want to reiterate that I intend to make this block series very, very beginners friendly. So if you're already an expert, this series may not be for you and you, you may find it very, very basic. So keeping that in mind, let's go start with setting up our LLM. Now again, you may face the choice, hey, you know what, whether to create a rag database or not to create a rag database. At this time, all I can tell you, don't waste your time on debates. Instead, just try building it. Like, you know, you will find it that building a rag database is not difficult at all. It's very, very simple. So instead of wasting your time on, like, you know, whether to have rag database or not, let's, go to, let's just go directly build it. Now, before we jump on any further, I want to take a pause here and briefly explain what we are trying to do. So our overall objective is to build an application like Manulify or Autoresponder or Helpdesk. Now to do that, here our primary objective is we are going to use a locally running model which is hosted on Olalama. But in future, what if you want to decide some other LLM models like Anthropic or OpenAI or Gemini? So in the very beginning, what I want to do here, I want to keep my options open. So what the point is, I'm going to show you the different approaches, approach one, approach two, approach three, and approach four. four. And I'm going to, because those, all of the approaches are very, very similar. If you know one, you will know everything else. And I'm going to cover Olalama at the last. So if you are only interested in approach five, that how to set up an Olalama, please skip to the later part of this, um, of this video. Uh, and please refer to the timeline I have included in the video description below. But my point is I want to keep my options open and I want to show you how to set up each type of LLMs. You may not use all of them. You may use only a couple of them or you may use only particular one of them. It depends on your requirement. But I'm going to show you each approaches and later we'll jump onto the Olarama. We will see how to set up each of these LLMs in a minute and, and all of those steps are very, very similar. So for now, let's just go started with the Anthropic LLMs. First thing you will need to set up an Anthropic LLM, of course, you need three type of API keys. One is the Anthropic API key, your Pinecone API, Pinecone API keys. Again, if you don't understand what those is, don't worry about that. We are going to cover those everything in entirely detail. So the point is very beginning, you open your code editor like you know VS Studio or um, this is the you know or you can use a cursor whatever it takes and just first thing you do you create a new virtual environment. If you find it easier you can always use the terminal and shoot a command saying you know pip install hyphen m vnv and create your own new virtual environment. But well, I highly recommend first step is creating a new Python working environment for this project. So as you can see on my screen, I already have a virtual environment called Gen AI. And first step, I'm going to set up Anthropic API. And don't worry about that. We are going to set up Gemini and Olalama, Lama 3 later on, and because all of those things are similar. First thing you want to inside your VS Code editor, uh, just uh, let's uh, first evaluate the platform. So import platform and type the platform processor. What it's going to do is going to display what kind of machine you have. So depending on your working environment, you may be working on a Windows machine or you may be working on a, a Linux machine, uh, doesn't matter. So here, first thing you want to do, uh, suppose you are working with Anthropic API, and again, please you know uh, skip this step if you are not. What you want to do, you want to set up those environment API keys as environment variable. Please do not type it here, otherwise you know somebody who is looking at your notebook he will be able to steal your API keys. So keep it in a safe place, and then you set up an API key as your Windows or Linux environment variable. All right. And then you want to simply write the code if os.environment.getAPIK. So simply what I'm doing here, I'm trying to access the environment variable set up on my Windows machine and trying to see if the key has been set up there or not. So if the key is not there, I want to throw an error. Simply, so this step just like saves you uh, some time. If you are like, you know, wondering sometime it happens, you haven't set up the keys and you are getting the error. So again, if everything is all cool, so what this code does, it says, hey, you know what, all API keys are in place. All right, this is again an optional step. So now let's go set up your, uh, you test the uh, LLM API. So again, import Anthropic, and I'm going to, you know, create a client, Anthropic.Anthropic, .anthropic, and here, if you look at the signature of this Anthropic class, you see it expects an um, API key. Now, by default, if you don't pass it, it will, anyway, it will go to the Windows environment and get it from there. But it's a good idea to always manually pass it so that you are complete control. All right. So once you create a client instance of that Anthropic class, next thing you want to do, client.message, 
and inside that message you want to you know pass couple of things here so you want to first of all you want to say maximum tokens temperature system and what kind of models you want to use again anthropic provides you a list of different models here so you can specify which model to you know want to run it from and one parameter specifically you may want to pay attention to is called messages so inside this messages is you pass two things role and content role means what kind of like you know role it could be an assistant it could be a user and content is where you actually ask your question so for example show me how many how are the arguments and keyword arguments are different in python so if you run this obviously it will is going to go to the anthropic and it's going to run that ask your question and return that uh, data back to you very similarly, sorry, I apologize if I'm going to way too fast because this has already been covered. Next thing is, suppose you are working with OpenAI model. Again, it's an option. So approach one was, I was using Anthropic API. Approach two is, I'm using OpenAI LLM. Very similarly, you have to go get a key, which is OpenAI API key. So please go to their website and sign up for a key. And very similarly, as you can see, you can just reuse the same code what I've just written. Here, simply I'm checking if the OpenAI API key has already been set up or not. If yes, then it says, hey, all the API keys are in place. Next thing you want to do, very similarly, similar interfaces. So as you can see, most of these LLM chat applications like Gemini or OpenAI or Anthropic, most of the interfaces are very, very same with a very minor little differences. So same thing here, I'm calling that OpenAI chat completion uh, class and I'm passing the model and I want to show, hey, what kind of model I want to use. All right, so let's cover one last LLM before we jump onto the actual Olarama. So here, simply what you need to do here, similar interfaces, I'm using the Gemini API key provided by the Google, and I'm calling that Gemini API LLM interface here. One last thing before we move to Olarama, Grok. So Grok is, if you have, in case if you haven't heard about it, Grok, please learn it from them. They are more of the infrastructure people than the LLM people, but what they are providing, they are providing an hosted, LLM models, including Llama and other models on their environment. And what the difference is, they are amazingly fast. So please check them out. Okay, now let's go move on to the Olarama. First thing you want to do, if you're on a Windows machine or Linux machine, please go to this website, which is olarama.com download. And depending on your working environment, please download the appropriate version. For Windows, it's very, very simple, very simple. It can't be simpler than that, even for Linux. So here, I'm using a Windows machine here. One thing I want to do, I want to just download the Windows. And again, if you browse their website, it's very, very simple, but great website here. It tells you whatever you need to know. So it tells you all the different models available on their website, and we will see how to install those later. So just click on the download button. What you can do, you can download an uh, executable EXE for Windows, and similarly, you can download a Linux on your Linux machine here. On Windows environment, just double click on the Olarama EXE and it will install that. Next thing you want to do, you can open a terminal window or you can just continue typing on this VS Code editor here. First thing you want to type is Olalama uh, list. So, and what it will tell you, it will, this command Olalama list, it will give you all the models available, uh, that means already installed on your machine. So suppose you want to install a new model, say PHI3 mini. So all you need to do, Olalama pull PHI3 colon mini, or if you want a Llama 3.1. So sorry, I didn't get a chance to update that. Today, 3.2 is released. So you may want to type Olalama pull Llama 3.2. So that's how simple it is to install and remove a model on your machine. Simply, all you need to do, Olalama pull, followed by the model name. Or if you want to, you know, remove a model, just say Olalama RM and remove that particular model name here. So as you can see, I'm using a different kind of different model. So for example, code, I'm using code Gemma for uh, Llama 3.2 for all the LLM related things. But it, depending on your requirement, please go through their website and learn what uh, model you want to use. And uh, they have variety of different models. What I heard as of today, that uh, Llama 3.2, uh, very, very soon, they are going to have a vision that means like Llama 3.2 is a multi-model. That means it's going to work on image as well so I highly recommend working with Llama 3.2 all right so next thing what you want to do in your Windows or uh, like you know in your Windows machine just go to the PowerShell and type Olalama run Llama 3.2 this simple command will run Llama 3.2 on your machine. Now, similarly on Linux machine, you can, what do you want to do? You type this command and include it in your bash SRC file. And the reason you want to do that so that you don't have to execute this command every time you restart your machine. So simply say Olalama run Llama 3.2 
and include this line into your batch SRC file so that it's auto executed every time computer is started. Now we have set up, so now let's go execute that Olama. Let's see that things in action. Similarly, what you have done for OpenAI, Anthropic and all other things, import Olama and create an instance of the Olama class here. And let's go use the chat method on the Olalama class. So Olalama.chat and similarly, as you can see, the signature of the methods are mostly the same. So pass the model and pass the message here. So again, if you have Llama 3.2, please use the model uh, Llama 3.2. And as you can see, first time when you execute that, because depending on your machine capability in here, trust me, you are running an 8 billion uh, parameter heavy duty model, which is like almost four to five GB on your local machine. So if you have a CPU machine, you may notice some delay. And first time actually it's a little bit, uh, it takes a little bit longer, but usually what happens in couple of seconds, it will go and execute your query and it will query the LLM model and it will return some results. So now if you have made it this far, congratulations, you have a local LLM running on your machine right now, which is completely locally hosted and is going to work without the internet. And that's exactly what I wanted to achieve in this video today. So again, this video was very, very basic and introductory video. In follow-up videos, now since we already have an Olalama and active LLM running on my local machine, now we are going to build a variety of different application on top of that. That's all I wanted to cover in this video today. Please watch for the next videos because next videos are going to be really interesting where we are going to build a variety of application. Stay tuned. Thank you.